Association General. So uh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to seven days of celebrating collectives during Kwanzaa. We're here today with Christopher Eclipse and his several uh, collectives, one in South Africa, one in Japan, and one in Los Angeles, which he's going to give us some more information. I just want to thank you all for being here. Um, we, no matter who shows up, we're just going to welcome them in the space and we're going to have a rich conversation with however many people are here. Um, so I do want to make sure that you know that there's two parts to this program. We have seven choreographers and seven collectives being featured, one featured each day during Kwanzaa. This is the fifth day and um, Koumba, and it's about creativity. Um, but the two parts are we have a broadcast, which uh, is goes up on YouTube early in the morning and people can check it out. And then for most of the sessions, we have a live session. So we're here at the live session today. And the live session is really about people being able to talk about what they saw at the broadcast, some of the content, maybe questions, talk to some of the guests and so forth. So um, oh, my name is Byron Johns and I represent A Place to Be, the organization that's hosting this uh, event. And um, really I'm inspired by the six days that, well, this is the six days, the five days that have gone before and I still need to finish Eclipse's video because I'm inspired by that. I got 12 more minutes to go, but he's doing <laughs> great things. And, um, also inspired by the choreographer who's here, who is Ronaldo. And Ronaldo is a member of the Ailey Company, you know, the Alvin Ailey Company. He's in the first company and travels the world and used to be a teenager hanging out with us in Chicago at Deeply Rooted, as well as Emerson High School. You know, those kids are so talented, uh, young people, youth. They choreograph and they, you know, they get trained really, really young. And Ronaldo is out of that, out of Gary, Indiana. So welcome, Ronaldo, and welcome, Eclipse, and everybody. And you guys should take it away. Go ahead, Mr. Eclipse. Um, well, I'll start. My name is Christopher Eclipse. And uh, I, well, first of all, happy Kanza, Habargani. Um, I represent uh, my collective, it's called Life Without Borders. And there, it's the umbrella um, name that houses home, which is Home of Magnificent Enrichment. It's an exchange program that I'm creating to get our kids back to the continent before they turn 18. Um, and then there's another program called Black Unicorns, which is an inspirational series that is going to be um, putting our Black queer activists, artists, lawyers, politicians on a platform to be able to speak and inspire other young Black queer kids to thrive. Um, uh, basically, uh, today is uh, Kumba, which is about creativity, and I, I've always um, feel like creativity pretty much is um, all I all I really am. I feel like creativity is the the um, the breath that I take every morning. I feel like it's a God given gift, and I feel like all Black people have um, that generating in the core of who they are. And so today, I kind of want to move along with that spirit and. Um, you know, the more people that come, we'll introduce, we'll introduce them and, and kind of just move along with the spirit and see what comes about with this conversation. But um, first, before we go anywhere in the spirit of Columba, I really, really want to, do we have uh, Ronaldo's uh, dance queued up to watch? Oh, no, we don't have it queued up to watch because it's at the end of the thing. Okay, but let me, actually. I, you have uh, it? Hey, Cara. I, if you give me a moment, I can get the- uh, Okay, sweet. But in the meantime, um, I guess before we watch it then, let's have Ronaldo introduce himself because the iconic, legendary <laughs> reputation exceeds himself. You know, like every king, the reputation exceeds Ronaldo. It's my first time seeing him, but we come from the same, um, meeting him, but we come from the same family, the same roots, deeply rooted in other organizations. So. I'm excited to have them. I'm very excited to see the work. We're all very blessed to have your talent and your gift. Part of this. Anyway, Ronaldo, who are you, what you about, and introduce yourself. Yeah, so peace and blessings, everyone. First off, um, happy Kwanzaa. I pray all is well with everyone, sending love and energy out um, to everyone that is listening and participating today. 
My name is Ronaldo Maurice. I am a black man who loves creativity. Please excuse me. I'm a black man who loves creativity, uh, who believes in family, um, who loves, who leads with love. And I think that has gotten me to where I am now. Um, I'm very grateful to be here today uh, to talk with you guys. So yeah, I'm just, I'm just excited. Um, we're about to enter a new year um, and I just pray that everyone is in good health and good spirits. Okay, um, Cara saying that your video is ready to watch, the choreography is ready to watch. For people who are just joining um, every day, there's a new choreographer uh, choreographing to this, the Kwanzaa song that you're about to hear. And today on Kumba, uh, this is Ronaldo's uh, choreography to that piece. So let's check it out. Okay, I'm just going to share my screen. Thank you, Cara. No worries, of course. Bear with me for just a second, guys. Ready, wasn't quite ready, apparently. Sorry about that. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> We should turn off our Looks like we had a lot of technical difficulties and I just want to apologize to you, Ronaldo, and suggest that uh, people 
take a look at the full broadcast, which the dance will be included in, and you probably will see it more in sync with the music. Mm -hmm. But phenomenal job, Ronaldo. Appreciate you lending us your talents to be a part of this program. Yeah, I, I'm sorry to take over, but go oh, ahead. it's okay. Let's uh, let's move in that spirit. Um, and I, you, it's never taken over. I, you, you've probably taken the words out of my mouth, but um, which is okay. Uh, if Corey and Juan and looks like Andre, my yeah, my cousin. Hey, Andrea is here. Um, please turn on your cameras. I know Corey, you can't, but if you guys would like to join us with your, your faces, we would like to see your faces. Um, but Renata, I, I that that work. Um, I just kind of want to know about what your process was uh, in creating it, and um, I'm, I'm sure you've seen some of the other um, things that've been created to it. Um, what, like, just talk about the process, what made you go in the direction, what you felt while you were making it, and how you arrived at that, that space with it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so once I heard the song, I was like, wow, I love the beat. Um, and I just love what the words, were, what the words were saying, honestly. So I, I had to listen to it a couple of times. Um, and we had just started back our season at, with Alvin Ailey uh, this, this coming December. And so for me, uh, the studio is where I'm most creative, I feel. And I was like, okay, then you need to do the piece in the studio. Um, and I feel like with creativity, uh, you need some type of support. So that's what the that's what the stool represented was my wow. support. Uh, you know, that's why I bowed to it. That's why I, I like leaned on it for some um, movement purposes. Uh, so that's kind of like I, I wanted to create um, like a mood, a vibe. Yeah. Uh, with the studio um, and once I did that we actually started um, with our New York season because we have been we haven't been performing so I have I haven't been able to like dance and perform uh, for like two years almost mm -hmm. so coming back you know for me uh, dance is a, is a safe place and performing is a, like a free zone so when I'm on stage I feel that is like the creator using me so I haven't felt that. And so I feel like I had so much energy bottled up um, and also dealing with the pandemic, so many life experiences as well that I just wanted to kind of just bring uh, to not only this work, but what I try to bring every work that I do. Um, I, I know one of my mentors, you know, his name is Minka. He just always told me like the work that you do in the studio should always be the work that you do outside the studio. So anytime that I approach anything, I, would, I never want it to be superficial. I always wanted to be come from an authentic place, um, and 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 hopefully, you know, it can inspire and mo motivate people to do, to do the same thing. Um, and so, just moving inside of that, I I go into the studio, I move, do some phrases here and there, I record myself. Some phrases I like, I'm like, uh, some phrases I don't like. I kind of you know retrograde it um, and then change it up, and then I kind of put the piece together. Um, I definitely have a storyline. I try to like build that. I find things that I'm uh, that I'm like inspired by. So, you know, performing, being around my coworkers, you know, every day that really inspires me to be be surrounded by so many gifted people that is all pushing uh, to be better every day. So that type of energy um, that motivates me to be my best self. Uh, so going into the studio and just taking notes to my family, they inspire me every day. Uh, my mom is my everything, so she's my queen. So I'm like those things, referencing those things. Uh, to be inspired and get my motivation from to tell the story is just kind of what I what I lean to in terms of like my emotion. Um, so it's like it's so it's real, you know. It's not really like <laughs> me just doing steps and you know what a what a like you know a no type of expression on my face. Um, so that's just that's just kind of how how it was created. And then I filmed it like five times because I'm not like, I'm all so picky on myself. <laughs> and so at certain angles I didn't like, I'm like, ah, no, I don't like that. And then like, this is just crazy. <laughs> so uh, we finally got, like, I finally was like, okay, I, I was I was confident with this with this version. And I felt good because it just flowed. It flowed yeah. from one thing to the next. And, I, and that's what I, that's as a professional, um, inside my career, actually celebrating my 10th year with the company, um, I'm very grateful and also doing it at a young age, you know, I'm just very grateful of my um, trajectory along the line, you know, uh, being able to work with Deeply Rooted and then also having that be my like foundation of my training and then taking it and moving on to, to go with Alvin Ailey. It's been like 
it's, it's called, I call it living the dream. So whenever I, I get an opportunity to create a work, um, I just kind of go inside of that and I really tap into my life experiences. Mm. So it come across authentic. Um, with, with your uh, experience, I just, in your dance, there, there's a certain like vulnerability that I, I was sensing, just like you said, I can kind of feel uh, your, your authenticity. Um, as, a, uh, as a black male dancer, how, how did you reach that type That's, of vulnerability in your dance? I am too. Uh, just make sure you put my shoes on. Huh? Can you guys make sure you mute it, please? Um, can we make sure that everyone's muted, Car? But um, as a as a black male dancer, like how how hard is it for you to? Because I know a lot of times we're not able to be vulnerable in the society. We have to kind of find this place where where we, it's okay. Um, how did you arrive at that space where it's just so easy for you to to communicate that? And was it hard for you to do that? Um, what was the what was the what's how did that, how did you get to that space? For other black male dancers who might be looking at this and seeing this, maybe scared to dance, maybe scared to take that leap into to, to, to start to study like that. What well, can you kind of tell us how you arrived at that space? Yeah, I think for me, um, I think it's just, you know, really figuring out who you are, like feeling figuring out what type of man you represent. With figuring out what it, what what type of character characteristics you want to embody, your integrity, what you want to stand for, those things you have to figure that out sooner than later. And when you can figure out those things, I think that is is when you begin to step into yourself. And so, for me, being a black man at the age of thirty years old, I, I it, it was hard for me because like dancing and like not really you know having people that support it or not really having people to think that it was gonna be an actual career, you know, also being a black man who was raised by a single mother, you know, so just different things that I, I had to like go through through my life and then also had to heal from. Mm -hmm. Because if you go along with life with those, with those, with that baggage, mm -hmm. it's just not good. And I, and, I, and I see it, we see it every day. So for me, it really, it, I, had to, I had to live. The work that I do inside of the studio, it is not a game for me. Like, outside the studio as well. And I'm just so, so grateful I have to bring his name up again. Many people know him by Marion Willis, but like I call him Minka because his name is Minka now, but he's really like helped guide me and to see um, the responsibilities, the discipline, and also uh, the dedication of what it is to be a black man. You know, that is very important to me. So inside of that, yes, the dancing and all of that, that's beautiful. But what are you saying? You know, what are you saying? Where, where, where are you pulling? Where, what are you pulling from? So I think um, and inside of figuring out who Ronaldo Maurice is, what Ronaldo Maurice stands for, um, it, I think that's really just helped me along along my way and knowing my worth from creation's perspective versus society's, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. And so um, I'm just very grateful. And also I have to like, I'm just very, very grateful to just have so many like beautiful people to pour into my life. Mm -hmm. Mentors, my mother, you know, just like other strong black women that poured into my life. You know, I'm just so, I'm just so grateful um, because I'm like, for me, and as I'm still learning and growing, I feel like my mission and the vision is clear. Like mm -hmm. versus like, oh, I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> and like, no, I'm clear. I'm clear. I'm clear on my mission. Yeah. And I think having that clear idea at the age of thirty and a black man in America, I think that's that's pretty good. Oh. Um, but the work doesn't stop there. The work is gonna is gonna get harder. Um, it's, and it's gonna increase because it's about to get real out here. You right. know, and that's just real with this pandemic mm -hmm. and just everything. It's like life is happening around us, but that doesn't like that doesn't stop. So yeah. you can't you can't stop like your work that you're doing to be a better person, to love better, to be a better person mentally, uh, to be a better, better person spiritually and emotionally. That work is serious for me as an artist, as a black man. Like it's it's not a game. So I think that's what that's what you all see. Um, you know, that's when people see when they see me dance um, because I'm just like I'm very grateful, you know, for the love. But I'm like, and also, you know, it's 
it's not it's it's not for the accolades either. Yeah. Like I'm not here, you know, for all of that. I'm just here to do the work. <laughs> I'm just and just keep it moving. And you know, I'm very grateful for it, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I can't allow my ego uh, to stunt my growth. Yeah. So all of that um, wrapped up into training every day, making sure your body is intact, eating good, you know, making sure you know you're on time for rehearsal, make, making sure you're showing up and representing yourself. Um, how you were trained, because I was trained from the greats, you know, Kevin Iger, Jeff, Dr. Elena Anderson, Gary uh, Abbott, like that is my foundation. So like, why wouldn't I want to represent myself wherever I go uh, to the best of my ability? So like doing that work off the stage is really, really important to me. Um, and I think that's going to only continue to allow me to grow um, in my artistry and also allow me to grow and as, a, as a human being. Mm -hmm. Thank you, brother. Um, can you just, for the for the uh, sake of the Zoom call, can you let us know how we can find you on uh, social so people can follow you? Um, yeah, for sure. I, I have IG, Instagram, um, Maurice Ronaldo. So that's M-A-U-R-I-C-E, Ronaldo, R-E-N-A-L-D-O. Um, and Facebook as well, Maurice Ronaldo. Uh, yeah, yeah. Man, thank you, man. Pre appreciate we all we all appreciate you. We all appreciate you so much. You and I wanted, to, I wanted to also shout out the same person, a Minka, uh, a brother who is a peer, but also like a, a beautiful, beautiful mentor to all of us. And uh, our Baba Jeff, who just came in the room. So actually, let's do introductions now since we have more people. Let's actually talk to everybody here. And since today is Kawumba. Um, I felt like introductions should be a little bit different. It shouldn't be just like say your name, who you are. Um, let's do this. If everybody's willing to do this, we're going to take a short little like two minute situation. Um, if you can the represent you um, that describe who you are, yeah, you got to get up from your seat and look for two or three things, bring them back. And then we'll give you a minute to talk about why you chose those two or three things. And if you can't get up from your seat, because you, you know, I know some of us might be half dressed. So make sure you turn your camera off. But <laughs> um, if you can find two or three things, um, if you can't find two or three things, just choose two or three words and then tell us why you chose those words to describe who you are. So your name, two or three things. So we're gonna take a short little two minute situation, two minute break, grab two or three things around you and we'll come right back. Let, let us know when you're ready. Just put a thumbs up and we can do it. And I'll go first. Andrea, did you get yours? I will put the timer on, okay? Look around, look around that room. There's something in there. Yeah. There's something in there. I, you, I know y'all got some in those rooms. Hey, what's that noise in the background, huh? <laughs> I'm like he's back there being creative. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> I think it's so amazing that we have these three generations, you know, wow. um, Iega, and then you are in the generation with Minka, and then we have Ronaldo, and it's just a philosoph the philosophical grounding of the three of you, you know, it, it carries through, and that's what we're talking about uh, with the Deeply Rooted Collective actually providing um some of that grounding or a lot of that grounding like a philosophy to live your life in you know which gives us being here as well you know but it's just so amazing that there's three generations of the deeply rooted uh process yeah. here and how you guys manifest you're creating something all over the world or at least in three countries and ronaldo's take traveling all over the world you know dancing and and has a bigger vision for his life as well. And so. Baba has a whole school coming up, so. <laughs> but, um, all right, are we all back? Are we good? Um, okay, well, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll start with three things since I, I, I did this and just kind of show you how it, I, 
how I thought this would go. So I, put, I chose three things um, that I felt like kind of represented me today. Um, I, you know, I am a creative and I feel like I give myself the, the chance to, or I give myself the space to get to know myself every single day and check in and see who I am and what I am and what I'm doing. Today, uh, when I woke up, I felt like these things represented me well. So first I bought my crystal. Uh, this is a selenite crystal. Uh, and I have used this crystal in meditation work and um, healing work uh, quite a bit. Um, I wasn't one of those people that was really into crystals at first, but for some reason when I got this one, I couldn't let go of it. And I was going through like this major breakup and I had it on me every day. And I realized one day that I, I, was, I didn't have it on me. And the same day that I realized I didn't have that crystal on me was the day that I realized I kind of moved on from this relationship because I had stopped thinking about this person in the way that I was and I haven't done. So I bring this because it's grounding and it's something that I'm, meditation is something I'm taking really serious right now in my life and I'm doing it, practicing it regularly. So this is a big part of me. Um, the next one was the glasses. I bought these because I just think that fashion is something that I am, I, I just love so much. I think that dressing and style is such a big part um, of um, expressing who we are. And I think sometimes people, play it like they play it like it's not important how you present and I and I, I actually feel like it really is I feel like it's one of the biggest expressions when people look at you you can tell a lot about a person by how they dress how they carry themselves and um, what they choose you can see the individuality you can see if they have group thinking methods you can there's just a lot of things to go with dressing and so I I love clothes and I love to express myself through dressing so I bought that um, last thing is shea butter this is my favorite thing in the world. And uh, it just, you know, I can't, I love being moisturized. I feel like our skin is black people. <laughs> it's just so much better with shea butter. This is my travel one. I always got it on me. And um, I just love self-care. Like self-care is um, doing the things in private that, that no one sees. So along with meditation, this is part of my self-care ritual. Um, and that kind of is, it just kind of describes the when I when I'm by myself. That's what I, I do. I like I really appreciate the self care. And this is one of the ways I do it. So I'm Christopher Eclipse. That's my three things about me. Um, let's go right to uh, let's go to you, doc, Dr. Byron. Oh wow! I thought you were going to call on your cousin because she looks like she's ready to go. I know, but I, I'm going to go down. I'm going to call on her. So get yourself ready. <laughs> you call on the next oh, person. Actually. Okay. My three things. One is my call. Let me put, let me take off my camera so y'all can see them. Sorry. Uh, my three things, my coffee mug, because that's what's helping me to get through, it gives me the, the, the drug to get up and idealistic and all of that. And then with that, keeping myself healthy are my supplements. And this is a daily probiotic for men, my age. And the last one is the phone with access to the world and all the creativity, this computer, so, so helpful. So those are my three things and I did it probably in less than a minute. All right, so now I want to- Make sure you say your name though. Make sure you say your name. My is Byron Johns and I work at a place to be now. Um, and I wanna hear from Miss Andrea Brown. <laughs> Hello, I'm Andrea. So I ran off and grabbed some stuff. So first I grabbed my camera because I've been a lover of photography since I was like 17. This is probably my fourth camera I've owned ever and my first digital one. And this is the one I've been doing my paid gigs with. Um, go along with this, I also do graphic design and I'm on a podcast and I'm kind of helping produce my cousin, my roommate stream. So I do all that stuff. Um, roller skating. Wow. I love to roller skate. <laughs> I don't do it enough, but these are my babies. I just got them last year. They're my favorite color purple and all of my journals. I'm not going to grab them, but they over there. I got like five journals and they all serve a different purpose. Pet peeves, anxiety, intentions, dreams, and then the <laughs> overall, I got to dump my brain somewhere because I think way wow. too much. That's amazing. Thank you, Andrea. I'm glad to see you, cousin. Speaking of creativity, this is like, as y'all can y'all can see that she's a ball of creativity. So I'm glad you're here to meet this collective, Andrea. These are the people <laughs> that you need to connect with uh, beyond this, this Zoom call. 
Uh, can of you course. pick somebody else? Um, let's go with, I'm gonna get Kara or Kara right next to me. Hi, hello, thank you, Andrea. That's so great. It's wonderful to be with everyone. Boy, did I have to scrounge around. I was like, ooh, three things, huh? Okay, good, thank you. Thank you for asking this question. Okay, so the first thing I have is my markers. These are pens. I use them in my journal. I use them in my notebook. I draw with them. This, these are really important to me. Uh, like my colleague over in, uh, at A Place to Be, my phone. I don't know how I live without this because it's just like the lifeline to the world and all y'all. So got this. And then lastly is my little um, bowl, my singing bowl that I use when I chant. I'm Buddhist and another lifeline. So thank you. Those are my three. Thank you, Carl. Can you pick somebody else? Uh, Kevin, uh, Iger Jeff, Baba Jeff said he can um, talk because of where he is, but he's listening. So anyone outside of him, I see men in the room if uh, you're willing to give a voice. And uh, we have Jason in the room. So who would uh, you I'll go, because um, I, I just asked him. He, he's traveling as well, men <laughs> um, So I think for me, my water, um, because you got to stay hydrated, <laughs> especially uh, with everything. You just got to stay hydrated. So my water, uh, my glasses, because far away and reading, I cannot do. So <laughs> whenever I need to watch the TV or if I'm reading or something like that, my glasses. And then these knee, this knee pad, because I'm choreographing a new piece um, and it's a lot of floor work. Uh, so yeah, that's and yeah that's it all right cool uh jason are you available to share three things about yourself i think it's he's, uh, he's muted and his uh camera's off all right so since me and kai and i are uh, listening and travel we'll just move on um cool so that just gave us a little bit of insight about who we are um and what we're doing out here uh, let, let's just talk about creativity in 2022 what's that's gonna look like for everybody um you know, for me, you know, during this COVID pandemic, I was in Tokyo and honestly, all these things that these collectives, weirdly enough, came out of um, the pandemic. And I was one of those people that felt like I was underachieving because, you know, during the pandemic, everyone had these creative projects and they were, I was like, wow, this person got their PhD and this person did this and this person did that. And I actually felt like I was doing nothing. And I looked back and I realized I did a lot of work during the pandemic. Um, and I realized how important the creativity is to me. Like, you know, I had, at some point I had nothing else and, um, you know, the loneliness and the aloneness, the isolation, it, it really helped me to focus in on why I was here. And that's why, um, home came about, um, home of magnificent enrichment, which is the program that I'm developing, uh, the exchange program came about. And then that's why black unicorns came about because, I realized that a lot of people um, like myself did not have a voice or a platform to speak because media is only looking to people who have trendy fame or um, look a certain way. And it just, we were underrepresented. And I felt like some of the most powerful voices that I've heard, mentors, um, and I've had the pleasure to, to be around were people that I've never, I never see online. And one time during a meditation, I, I got the note that, yeah, you, you've been able, you've been blessed enough to be around all these amazing people, have all these amazing mentors, and you've taken this information and you've been able to create this amazing space for yourself to live inside of, but why aren't you giving it back? Like, yeah, you have all this great stuff and a great, and your life is going good, but like, it's not yours. And you have to give that back. And my way of giving it back was, well, I can only give people what I know or who I know. So um, Black Unicorns is my way of saying, hey, this is an amazing person that helped me through this. This is an amazing person. And other people can come and see these people and meet them for themselves and create a network and start growing from that. So creativity for me literally has kept me alive and it has helped me to focus on my actual life purpose. I wholeheartedly believe that, um, when I transitioned from this planet, that is the one thing that people will really know that I did here on this planet is that I created things, 
um, from my heart and it was a gift uh, that I had to give. There's no choice for me to give. I don't have a choice the other way. I don't, I can't say no to the things that I'm producing. There's no, there's no, there, this is it for me. So um, what is creativity for everyone else? Um, and what other, pro what projects have you guys, um, guys, girls, them days, uh, what projects have you worked on and what's come out of this year for you creatively? Anybody can talk. Can I or working on or going to work on? Can can I just say I, I want to focus a little bit on your presentation mm -hmm. and how inspiring it was because it, you know, all the presentations are different, mm -hmm. but the vulnerability that it must be for you to share this dream with, you know, everybody you, you just kind of openly and to be bold enough to to share such an intimate. Um, presentation, something that's very meaningful to you. And I think what, what I was left with, um, I was, I, I just find you to be really engaging and really have a sweet energy and just kind of a, it's very uh, gentle and comforting. And it's like, come on in, come on in, come on and play. But more than that, I think um, we talk a lot about youth. And to me, you are a youth <laughs> um, because you are you could be my son. Um, we There's probably 20 or so more years between us. But um, that you have this vision for a different, a different legacy to leave for people coming after you, you know, and, and people my age often talk about these young people and what they're not doing and how they're not like us. And, you know, so I'm, I am um, um, inspired that, that you have taken on this vision and Ronaldo seems to be aligned with that too, like really about passing on something, being a contribution. And I also resonate with being a unicorn and want to get into designing merchandise for it, you know, like a black t-shirt that just says unicorn or all over the place. But I think, it, you know, we can create a movement that is for like the nerds. I mean, but we're not nerds, we're something else. That's why a unicorn is something different and special. But I just resonate and, and can't say enough um, and don't want to dominate the forum, but you're just such a light, you know, and it's just so, so fueling for me because it's like to know that people in the world like you, that I actually have access, you know, and can tap in and get fuel to do my thing. Because I wish that I was as brave and courageous and as forthcoming as you are, you know, at your age, you know. So I just say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for how you're taking on the project. Thank you for the contribution that it is. And I'm wholeheartedly your partner and want to be as much of a connector and resource as possible. I see your vision. I believe in your vision. And thank you. I want to say that that's it. And I want to open up the space for others to share. But thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? No, let it's me, not let anybody me. else. It's who else? Who else? Who? <laughs> Anybody else want to, does anybody want to share their, what creativity is done for them this year or how, what, what you're going to do the coming year? What, what are you feeling this coming year creatively? Any projects that's going to help the community? Projects you want help on, things you're thinking about. You know I'm looking at you, Andrea. <laughs> I'm waiting. Um, She's gonna talk, she's gonna let us in. Come on, open up, girl. Uh, okay, so. <laughs> My cousin's an introvert, Josh. She hates talking, yeah. but I don't know I that. Hate the but, I hate but the spotlight. She hates it, it. and I know, that, I know that, so I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm just so happy <laughs> to see you here. And I think that, I think my cousin sends me um, a text almost every other day about something that they're working on. And I, I just got one yesterday. So I'm like, talk, <laughs> use your voice. Okay, so. I've been creative my whole life, but it hasn't been at the forefront. It's been like this secret thing I've done. And like he was saying, I'm inspired by my cousin, Chris. Like I've been watching him all this time. Oh, ever since he left Indiana, I've been watching him and paying attention. I've always been inspired because I'm like, how can I get to that level of courage? I'm not afraid to share me and what I do with other people. And so over the past year, since I haven't been able to go anywhere, 
I've been throwing myself into the things that I enjoy. So that's why I have all these notebooks. I have the photography notebook and I've been doing photo shoots here and there. Like I'm flying home multiple times to do photo shoots for family. And then I have a network I'm building that's helping me with my graphic design and doing logos for people and, you know, helping them announce their beautiful things that have going in their lives. So when I'm ever I'm doing design and photography, it's always about how can I help people do whatever it is they're trying to do or present their product to somebody. And so that's always been something I love. And then for myself, it's like a safe place. I get overwhelmed and I get tired of people. And so I go back in my little corner with my colorful lights and my soft pillows and I draw and I sing and I dance and I do whatever it is I feel like doing. Cause I even have a guitar that I've been playing since 2013 and I still suck, but I still play it. And it all, I just keep coming back to it. So it's like, whenever I need to recharge, I get my creativity. And then as far as what's coming up, like he said, the tech chair today was the podcast. I was just a guest for this past year. And they finally said, let's make you a co-host because I'm there every week. And so I was put in charge of the branding of it and the Twitter account. And I'm like, oh God. So now not only are people gonna hear my voice, see my work, I have to interact with everybody. That's a lot <laughs> for me. So it's, it's really about me overcoming all of my fear and giving people who I am because everybody around me is like, we love you, Dre. And I'm like, for what? <laughs> so that, that's what it all comes down to. Just it's love for me. Mm. Hey, Jason. Welcome. Uh, did you want to share? Thank you, uh, Andrea, for, saying, for sharing that, by the way. Uh, I know how hard that was for you. I really do. And um, you're in a safe space, and this is about creativity and creation. So you're you're, you're good. You want to say something, Otto? I just want to say blessings to you. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. And keep and keep walking through the and keep walking toward the fear. Keep walking toward it because it's on the other side. Everything you're looking for is on the other side of that. Um, and we'll be here to help you and support you. Um, Jason, did you want to speak? I will check in. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Happy Kwanzaa. Um, and thank you, Chris and family for being here. Um, um, I've been going in and out, in and out. I'm not working, working, but I'm here at the center and we have the roof linking from yesterday's rain. So I'm walking through, seeing what needs to be done and all of that. But I appreciate your presence, all of you guys for being here and and sharing in this wonderful holiday season that we have called Kwanzaa to uplift and celebrate us. So um, I don't know if there's any particular topic. Um, I, I appreciate all of the work that is going into this, um, uh, but I'll, I'll just be brief and say, thank you for being here and thank you for allowing me to check in. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, let me ask you this, Jason. Is there anything, because we're talking about Kalumba and creativity, is there anything creatively that you want to see happen for yourself 2022 or that you you, you just um, did in 2021? Well, creatively, I, I have um, quite a few talents and gifts. Um, but I think mostly I would like to do more um, of my creativity through my cooking because I love to cook. Um, being from the Midwest, I love to uh, cook outside and, and do some good barbecue and smoking. So uh, my goal is to create and uh, show my expression of my creation um, of, of cooking. I, I love to cook and it's the, 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 the best thing that I can do to share my love with others is to share the food that I have made for them. Mm. Um, Byron just asked in the chat, uh, speaking of, I just want to say that this, uh, Jason, I met Jason at a food drive uh, that happens every Thursday here in Los Angeles. Um, you can give the address, um, but it is a beautiful food drive. Um, at their center, um, can you just, because uh, that 
Can you just say the name of the center and the address of the center and what the center is about? Because it's all about culture and creativity <laughs> from my perspective. I'd be happy to, and I'll put it in the, the chat for everybody as well. <laughs> Excuse me. It's Karas Unity Center of African Spiritual Science at 7825 Southwestern Avenue in Los Angeles. 90047. That is the intersection of, well, it's a three way stop actually. It's a three way stop at the intersection of uh, 78th Place and Western Avenue. So we do the food drive every Thursday from noon to two. We love to have people to come out to volunteer. We love to have people to come out to take the food. Um, and yes, this is a cultural spiritual center. We um, have been in place here in Los Angeles now for about 34 years. Uh, my dad, who you could see possibly in the background behind me in the red shirt is responsible for the great center that we have. He made his transition earlier this month, but he left us a great gift and there's a lot of Pan-African stuff going on here. So if you wanna take a, um, a, a bite, we got a big chunk for you to come bite from. 7825 Southwestern Avenue. The telephone number is 323-759-7567, Harambe. And that's 7823 Western Avenue? 7825. Two, five. And the name again? KRST Unity Center of African Spiritual Science. And that would be KRST Unity Center dot O-R-G. Mm -hmm. Thank you um, for that, Jason. That's uh, thank you, thank, thank you for the plug. <laughs> it's, it's 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 bigger than the plug. This is you know, I mean yeah. there is there's a lot of creativity that goes into us taking those boxes off that truck every Thursday. Okay. Yes. Yes. But um, yes. so y'all we here? <laughs> and we were here yesterday too in in the rain again. Yeah. So, uh, so y'all around and y'all can lend a hand, come through. And speaking of uh, Consuelo, who's down the bottom, is the one that linked me up with. Uh, Brother Jason's uh, center. So uh, they can't talk right now, but Consuelo is also a plug to that. So I don't know. You know. I, can, I can pop in. I can oh. pop in first. Can you hear me well? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, there you go. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm super grateful that I found Caras back in the day, and I'm super grateful that you have, uh, have joined me and are seeing the beauty of this organization, even just at this little tiny peak of the food drive, which is just one small fraction of what they do, even though it's so much. Um, it definitely is telling of what Caras is to the community, and I appreciate this, this, this resource of African spirituality and human beings that are just really about the community and really about teaching, supporting, learning um, who we are and, and uplifting this community. It's really a phenomenal organization, and I'm, I'm so proud and happy to have become a part of it for the last several years. Um, so there's that. And then I'll also contribute a little bit to this, uh, to the note on creativity um, and just put out there that like, you know, one of the things I, I definitely want to uh, put out of myself to produce of myself this year, there's a few things that I've been thinking on and working on and what have you, but, um, but I, I basically want to solidify a resource that helps people um, get into their activism a little bit easier. Um, there's so many things that need to that we need to do in this world. There's so many things that um, are coming at us, and we all need to put our effort in. Look at this beautiful lady. Hi, Erica, over there with Jason. Um, uh, that we need to to 
put in as far as work in our in our in our in our in our communities in the in the country there's so many things that we need to do and it's really hard for us to wrap our brains around it because like where do you start everything's coming at us it's healthcare it's you know the environment social justice what's going on who, who did the police kill this week you know there's so many different things and I really want people to be able to have a way to like okay what where can I contribute what's most important to me what are our top you know issues that are going on and how can I contribute to them so I really want to put out a resource that probably will be in the form of like a website you know and something that connects us to resources of people that are already doing work like these lovely people here at Caras who are already doing work in the community and uh and connecting us to how we can better um be an activist ourselves and whatever that realm is even if it's just educating yourself on your white privilege and then educating others you know whatever that may be so that's what that's what I'm trying to work on this year. Uh, Corey um a good person for you to know would be uh, Dr. Byron Jones. And like, uh, so make sure that you guys put your um, your plugs inside of the chat so that y'all can connect with each other. Um, because yeah, uh, Corey, Corey's been very modest too. Corey has a, a couple of things that are going to um, create adventures. I would say that's going to be very good for Los Angeles coming up in the next couple of years. I don't know if you want to even talk about that now, Corey, but if you can give us like some of your future plans, if that's okay. Can you tell them like some of the things that you're gonna be contributing to this, to LA? Um, well, uh, assuming you're, you're thinking on the dispensary note, um, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a, a beautiful collective um, that came from a, a collective called Fourth Movement that has created 64 and Hope. Some of you all may know or be aware. It's, uh, it's one of the few black owned uh, dispensaries in Los Angeles. It's all set up around social equity in LA, which um, just, you know, as we know, the cannabis became legal um recently or you know a few several years ago uh in california and of course like all other things the opportunity could be just completely swiped up by the people who are already resourced and have all of the privileges and advantages but people fought to have social equity in this space and fought for people from the community who have been disenfranchised by the war on drugs to be able to um, actually have ownership within that space um and i was super fortunate to be connected to uh um, an organization called Fourth Movement, who uh, who basically farmed for people who are from that those communities to help them actually stand up competitive businesses in Los Angeles. So you know it's one thing to say, oh yeah, you guys can have ten percent of the um, the cannabis licenses, the recreational cannabis licenses in Los Angeles. But it's another thing to say, like really, how do you make that happen? Because you know there's so many barriers to that. There's so many um, you know there's there's so much red tape. There's so much investment that needs to be done. And who who do you know around the corner that just has, oh yeah, let me let me go ahead and lease this property for you for a year so you can apply for this license. Oh yeah, let me invest all of this money so you can actually apply for all these licenses. There's so many barriers, um, but 64 and Hope is a representation of people who really believe in the community, understand the benefit of ownership and how necessary that is for our communities and invested in people who care about their communities and wanna reinvest in their communities and wanna go right back into the hood and, and into our hoods and be, basically help build and reinvest and show our faces um, what what exactly that can look like when, when there's when there's care and concern and investment in our, our neighborhoods. So look at your local, go to 64 and hope um, with a, with the word spelled out as in 64 um, and hope go on Instagram and follow that community. There's already a, a, a one open over on La Cienega at 2000 South La Cienega right next to the 10 freeway. Our, uh, our girl Khadija owns that, a beautiful member of the community. She's rocking that store. Um, it's also a really beautiful space so that you can go and really enjoy what you see and learn about cannabis and learn about the medicinal, you know, properties of it and enjoy your experience. And then our girl Robin's uh, store is opening on Melrose. Um, and we're, we're, we're about to have numerous stores out here in, uh, in Los Angeles. So 64 and Hope um, is really the way for you to invest with um, in your own health and your own cannabis, you know, knowledge, um, as well as in your community. And my store will be coming soon. My store will be in Boyle Heights about a year from now. Looking forward to it. Thank you so much for that, Corey. And uh, I, I talk about like mental illness. If you guys are able to go watch the um, the um, program that I did for, for a place to be in this Kwanzaa celebration, I talk about the mental illness that our community faces and why I think it's important that we get back to the continent. 
um, to help heal those pieces of, pieces of us that never are ever going to be healed in this country. We can only get it by returning back there on the land and, 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 and connecting with who we are. Um, I think our ancestor, ancestral information is inside of us, inside of our DNA. It is there. It's definitely there. But it's something very simplistic about the healing that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the type of healing that um, just being able to see uh, a, a world around you that is a majority and, I, um, and what comes with that. Um, and before I even go into this one story, I just want to say Minkoff, who is on this, um, who's here now, uh, blessed me with my first trip to Africa uh, about 13, 14 years ago. We went to Egypt and um, traveled north all the way to South, South Egypt. And um, that was my first step onto the continent. And that was Minka doing the work of one of uh, Baba Ega's mentors. And it's just something that's continued. So I'm not the first person that, that, done, that is thinking like this. Um, I am one of the people that is taking on, I'm taking the baton because I've seen what it's done for me because of people like Minka and Baba Ega Jeff and other mentors have come before. So I'm just taking the baton and starting to run with it. But the reason why I brought up mental illness is because people like Corey, and I believe Corey, tell me if I'm wrong, but I think it's your, your place is the second uh, black woman owned dispensary, or is it the first? I think the, I think the other ones, are, uh, the, the one that's the first is the, is the that's open now. It's first black owned uh, dispensary, black woman owned dispensary here in LA. Um, but I, I wanted people to know that because I know mental illness is something we face. And I know that at this time, people are using cannabis for, uh, to fight depression and some people are using it to get creative, but it is something that um, I think we should start talking about and use it. And if it is gonna be used that we should be supporting our, our own people um, who have these dispensaries and can teach us how to use it correctly and not just abuse it. So um, is there anybody else that wants to talk about um, what they have going on creatively, uh, what they want to happen. Did anybody else want to plug themselves? Okay. Um, I, you well, know what? I, I think you, Eclipse, you kind of have it out focused on everybody else. And I think it'd just be a great opportunity for people to talk about you and to respond to your work and your presentation um, if they've gotten to see it or even just to acknowledge uh, who you've been for us all. You know, I've done my bit, um, but I think, you know, it'd be great to, because you've been kind of focusing it on us, let's focus on you and the work you've done. Yeah, I mean, the reason why I, you know, I, I did that because I, I honestly feel that, you know, well, there's a YouTube video that talks about everything that I'm doing, but, you know, I'm inspired by, I'm inspired about, uh, by what people do. And um, I would never have been in this place to work um, past the fear like my cousin talked about, or to, to, uh, to actually to follow my purpose if I didn't have people like you. So that's why I'm so curious about what you're doing. Um, but the, the, the one thing I guess I didn't talk about a lot is Black Unicorns. And it's Black Unicorns is, um, again, it's a, it's a show that focuses on visibility to um, people that identify as queer, um, other, trans, they, them, those. And they're, they're people who um, have inspired me along the way. Some of them I haven't met, some of them I have, but um, I just recognized that they was, there, there wasn't a voice out there for, for them. And I've always felt like a unicorn myself. I am a double spirit. I do, um, I do identify as a double spirited person. I do feel like there is a, um, there is a, a, a woman in me and there's a man in me and they're both operating together. Um, and I've learned to, um, to bring those voices together and listen to them and obey, obey them. Um, so I stepped forward into who I am, honestly and authentically, because when I don't do that, it becomes a very dark place for me, right? And so for me to 
do this work is me stepping into the light of who I am and refusing to allow those voices become to become something negative. Um, and anyone who has a double spirit or anybody who has uh, dealt with uh, gender issues, uh, and, and especially if you're Black, we, we know how dark that place can be because there's not a lot of resources for us, not a lot of people having those conversations um, about how to heal, where to go to heal. And um, that's, that's what the Black unicorn community is going to be. And it's going to be a space to talk and to heal. Um, and I do feel like the reason I called it Black Unicorns because I do feel like it's magic. I feel like it's absolute magic. They were able to pull this, this, um, this kind of strength out of nowhere and, and almost survive, then thrive. You know, we start, it, it, it's survival at first because we're just trying to reach and find ways and we start running into mentors like Baba, uh, Jeff, and we start finding people like you, Dr. Byron, and then, but we have to find each other. And then once we find each other, uh, depending on what we do with the seeds that were given to us, how we plant them, we either thrive or we, we go back into that dark place. So Black Unicorn is about keeping that space alive, keeping that voice alive, giving more of those voices to talk about it and be honest about it. Because if you think about it, the Bayard Rustins and the Baldwins and the Zornil Hursons and the, and the Ninas and the, you know, so many of them came before us who was hushed and they, they spoke for so many people. Their voices spoke for so many people in the world, but how many people was really speaking for them? Like how many people was trying to save them? And I feel like we've always been, as you know, queer black people, we've always been on the front line of saving other people. And I'm like, F that. We're say we're gonna we're gonna save each other from a from an honest perspective. We're gonna save other people by being authentically who we are, and we're gonna look out for our people. And I'm not saying that you know we're not we're not we don't care about uh, heterosexual reality in the black life or whatever, in, in in our our black communities. But it's it's time for us to start taking care of ourselves so that we can take care of everyone better. So the only way we're gonna do that is about being honest who we are and getting our stories out. So um, the Black Unicorn series, you can see it on the, you can see it on the YouTube uh, uh, video that I put up is something I'm really, really passionate about. And I've completed 13 interviews with um, different uh, types of Black unicorns, lawyers, doctors, teachers, uh, directors. Um, the one I have up now, uh, the three that I, I showed to, on, the, on the YouTube, um, one is with, uh, Dr. Lena Anderson, who is actually one of my mentors and my sister, um, who is a teacher now, but received her PhD uh, right before she turned 50, started studying when she was 46, have been through multiple, 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 multiple uh, levels of training and thoughts. And um, something stands out by what she said on her interview, which was, because I asked everybody, you know, how do you identify? And, she said that she, when she hears people ask that question, she um, responds to that I'm human. That I'm human. I don't, I don't, that, there's no they, them, she, he, I'm human. And, you know, when you, it sounds very simple, like that's a, like a, a small answer. When you think about someone that has that much information, that much knowledge, just to get to the simplicity of being human and want to be seen as a human being, that says a lot. Um, then I have an interview with um, on the on the YouTube with uh, Jamal Sims, who is um, started their career as a dancer, went to choreographer, now it's a director, and you've probably seen some of their work. Um, they've directed uh, quite a few um, RuPaul Drag Race, but it's one of my also one of my mentors. Um, and when you hear him speak about his his um, his journey, he talks about how at this level of his career, which is a very high level in the Hollywood scene at this level of directing that he still walks into those rooms and has imposter syndrome. Um, and I, I know a lot of double spirited people, we walk into these rooms and we, 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 we have to like, um, what do you call it? We have to uh, put on a code switch in a way, code switch and try a straight person, like change it, change it up, you know? And it feels like, 
you know, we're, do, we're doing all this work. Again, he's directing all this stuff, but he's still going there feeling like he's an imposter, even though he's the one bringing the gift. He's the one bringing the magic. He's the one bringing the power. He's the one bringing the people. He's the one bringing the look. He's the one bringing this. So um, I think, you know, with, when you hear someone like him talk, you realize he's not the only person that feels that, that we all, we all feel that no matter what stage of the game we're in. Um, and then this uh, sister named uh, Michelle Taibu, she's another snippet that I put on there and just beautiful, queer, black, open, authentic, um, multidisciplinary. Uh, she basically identifies bisexual, has a trans male son, a daughter who's an actress and a long-term partnership with the man uh, who understands her and is also poly. Uh, and just she manages all of this while dealing with a terminal illness and is just a powerhouse of a person. Um, the type of power that a person like her possesses is the kind of power that we all live off of every day. We just don't know it. It's people like her that are giving us these, this power that we have. So um, Basically, uh, that's what that platform is about. And I guess the reason why I'm talking about that one now, because I feel like the home, what I'm developing with home, which is the exchange program, I, again, I feel like that's something that's been passing me almost a baton-like thing where I have to do that kind of healing for our community because it was given to me and it was given to me at a late age. Um, but I do need to give that back to a couple hundred thousand people kids because I know what it done for me at 40 years old. It needs to happen for other people. But black unicorns, I almost feel like it's something that the creator dropped in my head and said, yo, I know you're scared. I know you're scared. I know you're scared to be uh, this person. And people are gonna look at you and they're gonna say you're this, they're gonna say you're that. They're gonna think you're masculine, think you're feminine, they're gonna da, da, da. And creator was like, nah, get on that camera and talk and talk to people and share these people with the world. That's for you, get it done or else. And it feels that serious. Cause yeah, just like you cousin, I, I have my camera. I started with my little camera and I have my little broken computer that was a teleprompter and I was setting it up every day, sometimes three or four o'clock in the morning, calling people all over the world from Tokyo, getting these interviews through Zoom. And um, it was very, really, really rewarding for me. It was emotional. Um, Kevin, well, Baba Aiga Jeff used to say that like when you do a show, um, when you have a show happening, um, you experience it first before you get on that stage. Whatever happens in that rehearsal space, whatever's going through your emotion, you're, you're actually going to experience it before you even get to the audience. And when I was um, doing this interviewing process with these different levels of unicorns, I was having all types of birth pains, tears, sometimes pure joy, um, sometimes fear because it was a reality that we are all kind of going pushing this this envelope together, and I, it was just kind of like wow, like for all of us to be feeling the same way in some ways was kind of like a little scary. Like, where is our community at? You know. Um, so I'm excited to share that gift with the world because if it's going to be anything like what I experienced interviewing, we're in for a little ride. So that's pretty much it. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a whole lot. But that's but it's good. I'm glad you shared it. Um, and thank you for giving me the the to telling me to share because I really wanted this to be more of a creative flow, and I didn't want to stop the the energy from flowing however it flowed. But um, if you guys got something out of that, then you know so be it. Um, but honestly, I really am inspired by y'all. I'm, I'm I'm I want to hear, it, but I'll stop there. Um, we are at an hour. And I am really um, living in Tokyo has made me very aware of people's time and space and I don't like to take advantage of it. By the way, when you guys come to visit me in Tokyo, the space is always available and open for you to come visit. And I love to show you guys around. Whoever's watching this, contact me. I'm down for that anytime, but never be late. <laughs> never be late. They consider a minute late, uh, like a year late. It's, it's the one thing that you cannot be, you cannot be late and you got to start and end on time. 
So that's something that you know I try to honor with, um, with in, in this space. Is there anything else anybody else would like to say though before we leave? Anything? I think you're amazing and I just have to keep saying that. So I just wanna be encouraging and validating and Ashe. Here, 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 here. We love and adore that human being, all of us who are fortunate to have you in our realm, Christopher, me for so many years. Um, you know, there's nothing but light and love and support and enjoyment uh, of you as a person. And it's been beautiful watching you grow. And it's been beautiful just having you anywhere within our realm. And so, yeah, here, here, I support that completely. Eclipses, Christopher is amazing um, and, and will be forever. Well, thank you for that. I received that. Thank you, Ronaldo, again, for being here and sharing your gift with me, brother. I cannot wait to build with you, um, however that manifests itself. And um, Minkai, I know you're there. I can feel you. <laughs> um, thank you for being here and being supportive. I had a feeling you were going to be here today. And Jason, I'm glad you came to, um, to join us. And I'm so looking forward to uh, being available for the community in Los Angeles. Um, Andrea, I'm excited for you, my love, because I feel like this is going to be such a big year for you. And just coming out of your shell is just going to be, for us, we're going to get to, to experience your books and your writing and your photography and all the things you do and your queerness. My cousin has the dopest queer life, Black lifestyle. Honestly, it just, I admire it. I've learned so much. Um, honestly, a lot of the things I've I've been able to talk about and before with was with Andre on the phone. We just talk about you know our life as Black queer people, and Andre has wrote, wrote about it. It's in poetry. She she's a she's a powerhouse, and I'm glad that people are going to see that. Um, Cara, thank you so much for your for your um, contribution and staying up all night with all of us every single night as crazy creative people. And you've been just right there crazy with us <laughs> um, in the editing. It's just been amazing getting to know you. And I, I feel like we're just about to not only create a lot together, we're about to make some money, sis. Mm. Um, <laughs> we're about to make some money. Uh, and uh, Baba Aika Jeff, I see you writing in here. Um, I can't thank you enough for the contribution. I always tell you how much I love you and how thankful I am that you saw my little crazy black self coming into that room and you let me audition and train under you for all those years. And then I took off and you, you, you let me go. And, um, and yet, and still, I can come back and meet another one of your, your, your children, Ronaldo and, and Minka and I are still connected. And then there's Dr. Byron here. And I've, in, I've actually interviewed some people in Japan that are connected to Dr. Byron and uh, Baba Ega Jeff that's been in Japan for 30 years and under the Black Unicorn series and they're connecting me to people in Japan. So um, what you gave me is more than some dance moves. You gave me, you gave me a life like, <laughs> like us, you know, it's just, it's so much bigger than dance. Um, and last but not least, Dr. Byron John, thank you so much for um, seeing me and uh, just seeing me. I don't, I don't think anybody has ever um, did this type of work um, and made me feel so included in it and made me feel like it's special enough to share. So you, you I, I second what Ronaldo said, the work you put into this uh, and everything that people are experiencing is basically your baby, it's your seed. So, you know, you have a vision and you know it's happened and um, we are all grateful for it because this is going to live on forever. It's now in the cyber web, so it's going to live forever. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. So um, with that being said, uh, I see my friend Cheryl just came. Cheryl, we're actually wrapping it up. Do you want to say hello before we wrap up? Hi, everyone. I'm so sorry to miss this. New Year's uh, Eve parents, but I'm sure I'll catch the recording. Yeah, okay. Um, Cheryl's, another, Cheryl's one of my close friends in LA, another super powerful person here doing a lot of great work um, here. But um, 
yeah, with that being said, y'all, um, walk into the fear, walk into your creativity. It's 2022. Um, we got here. We did it. We did it. So that's that. That's all we needed to do this year. Just get get here to this present moment. So take care, guys. Be blessed. Uh, be blessed. See y'all next time. <laughs> Thank you.